Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to talk about Amazon's new MMO in New World, specifically the weapon masteries that are available in the game. Today we're going to cover part 1, which is the sword and shield. So, if you're anything like me when it comes to playing RPG or MMO games in general, you like to plan your builds out ahead of time, and a large amount of the satisfaction from playing these type of games comes from when you work towards that specific build, and then eventually bring it into fruition and enjoy it. To that end, I've decided to put together a series of guides on the weapon mastery system, like I mentioned, that's available in New World. Um, and you can use that to define your character through their skill trees. That way, players like you and I can plan what skill trees we'd like to take our characters down when the game's full launch comes around, without having to sort of get a feel for the game and make decisions that, well, are going to drastically alter the playstyle and performance of your character whilst you're on the fly. Starting at the beginning always makes sense, I get them better. and as such we're going to look at the weapon mastery that the player will probably first encounter when playing the game in the sword and shield. But obviously over the course of the series we'll be looking at every weapon type that is available and how to accentuate them with your statistical decisions and so on. So if we haven't covered your preferred weapon type yet or you know the archetype you want your character to follow but there isn't a guide, well fear not because I'm going to go through them all. A lot of the guides are already up on the MGN.GG blog, so keep an eye on that for the guides as they come out and the videos as they do on the YouTube. If you're wondering what stat attributes you'll need to focus on when making the most out of your sword and shield wielding character, they'll benefit mostly from strength, but your dexterity stat will also contribute to your weapon performance as well. So it's never a bad idea to grab plenty of points in constitution, especially if you're focusing on the defender tree and trying to fill sort of the more traditional tanking, quote unquote tanking role within New World. You might be wondering why I've lumped shields in with the sword weapon type, if you're unfamiliar with the game. It's because the shield is only wieldable with a sword as well, there's no dual wielding of swords uh, in New World, just as of yet anyway. As such, the sword weapon mastery also includes a skill tree for the shield. Naturally, the sword side of the skill tree is referred to as Sword Master, it's pretty straightforward, um, and it's focused more on the offensive side of the weapon mastery in general. The skills in this tree are all about dealing damage, getting into the thick of a fight, getting critical hits, um, and it does include some debuffs. Inversely, the opposite side of the skill tree that focuses on your shield, it focuses more on the defensive and crowd control elements of the game, as you'd probably imagine. This tree includes also some stuns, other debuffs, uh, methods of raising your defense, getting some health back, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that side of the skill tree is referred to as Defender. First we're going to take a look at the active abilities of the Swordmaster skill tree, uh, and then the augments that you can apply to those skills. Then we're going to swap over to Defender and do the same, and then we're going to go over the passives in general. So let's start with the Swordmaster leftmost skill tree. The first active skill is called Whirling Blade, and what that does is it deals 145% weapon damage to all, all foes around you within 2 meters. The cooldown for this is 15 seconds. Now you can augment Whirling Blade with two options, the first being Opportunity. That applies to your Whirling Blade and it gives Whirling Blade a rend effect, a 5% rend effect for 10 seconds. The second is called Tactical Strike and that means that Whirling Blade will have its cooldown re reduced by 10% for each enemy that you hit with the skill. So if you hit a couple of enemies, you might be able to use Whirling Blade quite soon. Second skill for the Sword Master Tree, the active skills anyway, is Reverse Stab. And that is a stab attack that deals 175% of your weapon damage to the target. Cooldown on this is 20 seconds. Again, we've got some augments for Reverse Stab, the first being Unstoppable Stab. And that is that Reverse Stab, the skill itself, will gain the effect of Grit, means it's unstoppable and unblockable. The second of those augments is called Tactician, and what it does is that on a successful hit with Reverse Stab, all your other sword cooldowns will be re reduced by 25%. That's a big number, 25%. The third active skill for the Sword Master Tree is referred to as the Leaping Strike, and what you will do, as sort of the name suggests, You'll leap forward 4 meters, and then you'll deal 135% of your weapon damage to the target. Cooldown on Leaping Strike is 25 seconds. Again, Augments, the first being Final Strike. If you hit a foe that is below 30% health, you'll deal 50% more damage with the skill. And the second one is called Cowardly Punishment. And that does what that does, if Leaping Strike hits a target that is not facing you, you hit them in the back, you slow them down for 8 seconds after that connection. Okay, 
So that's the active skills for Swordmaster. We're gonna swap over to the active skills and the augments for the shield variant of the skill tree, and that's called Defender, like I mentioned. The first active skill for Defender is called Shield Rush, and what you'll do is you'll rush forward 5 meters, knocking back foes along the way, and then dealing 125% weapon damage to those you hit on the rush. Cooldown for this is 20 seconds. Shield Rush has two augments, the first of which being Improved Rush, and what that does is on a successful hit, or any enemy that is hit, will be weakened by 10% for 4 seconds. The second augment to Shield Rush is called Intimidating Rush, and on successful hit, all enemies within 5 meters of you are slowed by 30% for 4 seconds. The second active skill under the Defender skill tree is called Shield Bash. What that does, you'll deal 50% weapon damage and stun the foes that are in front of you for 2 seconds. Stuns mean they, they can't do anything, they can't do blot, they just sit there for 2 seconds. Cooldown on Shield Bash, 25 seconds. As usual, uh, Shield Bash is going to have some augments, the first of which being Intimidating Bash. And what that does is it causes Shield Bash to have, it generates a lot of threat and it has 100% more damage. So you do 100% more damage and you're going to get aggro if you use it. The second augment to Shield Bash is called Concussive Bash and that just increases the stun by one second and takes it up to three seconds stun. Your third active skill for the Defender tree is going to be called Defiant Stance. For eight seconds, reduce all incoming base damage from attackers by 30%. Pretty good, you're gonna survive longer. Cooldown on Defiant Stance is 45 seconds. As usual, it has some augments, the first of which being the final countdown, and that if you use the skill while you have less than 50% health, you get an extra 20% of damage reduction, taking it up all the way up to 50. The second augment to Defiant Stance is called Restoration, and that adds a 15% heal of your max health when the stance ends. That's a good augment to take. Now that we've gone through the active skills and how you can change them, we're going to go through the passives for the Swordmaster and Defender skill trees in general. The first of which being Achilles Heal. The passive is that your final attack in your light attack combo or chain, whichever you want to call it, causes a 20% stun for 2 seconds. The next is Empowered Stab, and what that does is successful heavy attacks will grant you 30% in power for 5 seconds. Next is Precision. Sword Critical Strike Chance increased by 10%. It's good if you're going for crit builds. The next is Freeing ju Justice. Successfully hitting with a heavy attack will cause you to lose all your debuff. You'll get a cleanse. That's great. The next is called Counter Attack, and that's when you block an attack with your shield. You'll gain 10% extra damage for 20 seconds. That's a really long time. Next is Mobility, and what that does, it grants you 33% more movement speed than you would normally have whilst blocking. You know, normally blocking, you reduce a lot of your movement speed, so you get 33% back. The next is called Opportunist, and that you will, what that does is that you will just generally deal 10% extra damage against the foes that are slowed. It doesn't have to be your slows, it's just that are slowed in general. The next is Critical Precision. On critical hit, you gain 20% extra movement speed, or haste, whichever you want to call it, for 5 seconds. Next is Confidence, and while you are at full health, I mean, you, you haven't taken any damage yet, you deal 15% extra damage, so it's hard to maintain this, but when you're initiating, it's always going to be active. The next is Leadership, and what that does if you're holding a sword, all the members of your group, they get 10% extra damage, makes you a good support character, a good tank. The next is called Sturdy Shield, and that grants you an additional 15% physical armor, we're going to move on to the next one, which is called Sturdy Grip. And what that does is that your damage, the damage that your stamina takes is reduced by 15% if you're blocking a melee attack with your shield. It sounds situational, but if you're in the thick of the fight, it comes up pretty often. And the next is called High Grip. And that what that does is you have your stamina damage reduced by 15 when you get hit by a ranged attack. So if you combine them both, you don't have to worry about what range you're getting attacked from. The next is resistance, or elemental resistance, and what that does is it's the same thing, but for magical attacks, reduced by 10%. The next is called defensive training, when you block an attack, you gain 10% fortify for 5 seconds. You can see the theme here. The next is one with the shield, when you block with your shield, all of your shield skills get recharged by 1%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're blocking a lot of attacks, it adds up quickly so that you can repeat your active skills often. The next is called final blow. 
And what that does is that the third attack in your light attack combo or your chain will deal 15% more damage and causes you to generate threat. Again, if you need aggro, this is a really good way to get it. The next is called Fortitude and it's simple. While you're holding a sword, your current and max health are increased by 10%. You just get extra health, it's great. The next is called Recuperation and that's all incoming health and regeneration is increased by 10%. You'll help your healers out. And the last passive option is Defensive Formation. Whilst blocking, reduce damage to all allies within 2 meters of you by 30%. That's great if you're playing in a group and they need someone to take the hits and help them out. That just about wrapped things up for our overview of the Sword and Shield Mastery for Amazon's new MMO in New World. We hope you found the information useful in planning out your character and we hope to see you online. If you have any suggestions, comments, well, we'd love to hear from you on the ngn.gg blog where I'm going to put all this information, of course. You can reach out on our YouTube channel. We have a new MGN underscore t TV Twitter and a Discord as well. We have our own Discord. I'm going to put links for all these in the description of the video review. Make sure to keep an eye out on the blog, on the YouTube for the episode two, which is going to be on the musket. Thanks for listening.